So let me start by um, just uh, talking about briefly about the Enrich project. And specifically, I'd like to um, mention four premises and two principles that have guided the Enrich project from its inception until today. So what are the four fundamental principles, uh, premises uh, of the Enrich project? First of all, the first premise is that um, ELF research, which began as an innovative analysis of non-native speaker discourse, soon proved to be a very interesting and progressively extremely persuasive perspective um, of drawing insights for communication in English globally. And uh, again, I'd like to thank Kurt for raising this dimension really um, comprehensively uh, in the first part of his talk. So, ELF is useful, that's the first premise, that ELF is very useful for English language teaching. The second premise uh, is linked to the very nature of ELF itself. ELF is not a standard variety. ELF has fluidity. Uh, research has proved that time and again for more than ten, uh, two decades. And since ELF is extremely fluid and cannot pin down, you cannot find a dictionary uh, uh, that really comprehensively and fully defines it, it is essentially non-teachable. Non which means that in order to consider integrating ELF in the English language classroom, we would have to make specific decisions regarding pedagogy that would draw on insights from ELF research, and particularly ELF discourse analysis and pragmatics. This uh, leads us to the third premise, which is related to the pedagogical forms that the above implications of ELF uh, using ELF for English language teaching contexts should take. What forms, what pedagogical forms should ELF take? Um, it, it was for, for Enrich, it was necessary to develop a comprehensive framework. And this is what uh, the ELF Awareness Framework does. It provides a, a framework that convincingly supports the linking between ELF related insights and English language teaching. Such a framework needed to be theoretically sound, that is, with reference to established propositions regarding conceptual understandings of communication and pedagogy, on the one hand, and practically informative, uh, with specific suggestions and obtainable outcomes regarding instructional methodology and teacher education practice. So, we developed a way of engaging with the findings and in insights of ELF, but also World Englishes and English as an international language. And we engaged in ways of, we found ways of engaging teachers in small action research projects of their own choice and development by prompting them to design and to teach lessons that impacted their immediate teaching context and drawing some reflective conclusions from this experience. Finally, the final, the fourth premise of the Enrich project is linked to the need to, we realize that we haven't invented the wheel as teacher educators. So we draw on other similar projects that took place in the recent past that could inform decisions made with regard to the two concerns. And there have been, we've been very lucky to have had such um, uh, teacher education projects run by Yasemin, by you and myself at Bogazic University. It started starting in 2012 and uh, Stefania Cordia has developed her own um, teacher education project for her PhD research. So these are the four premises. Now, what are the two principles of Enrich? The first principle is that the first priority and primary concern in teacher education programs that adopt the ELF Awareness Framework is the focus on participant teachers and learners' attitudes. So we are interested in changing the way they perceive how they essentially teach and uh, through that they would incorporate ELF Awareness. So it's the attitudes of teachers that has been at the epicenter of uh, ELF research 
itself since the early 2000s. Uh, although learners' and teachers' perspectives change and evolve as the years go by, and as health research becomes more widespread and deeper, and therefore more convincing and inevitably more relevant for uh, English language teachers, working around learners' and teachers' perspectives regarding health related concerns is considered by the health awareness framework to play a central role in integrating health within English language teaching. And I'm going to finish with a second principle. Uh, that we um, adopted in uh, the Enrich project, that the teacher education approach is essentially non-interventionist. In the Enrich teacher education project, participant teachers are presented with information and insights provided by the extensive research carried out within ELF, World Englishes and EIL. However, they are not instructed to follow specific directions in applying these insights in the teaching context. It would be ill-advised for the developers of such a project to pretend to know every single teacher's different teaching context better than the teachers themselves and offer them all the answers to issues and problems that may arise, arise in each context. So this, these are the four premises and two principles of the Enrich project in my view. I don't want to take too long, don't worry, it's not going to be a long talk, but I just want to follow from what Nico said by just giving some instances of what we have done uh, until now. Uh, he has already nicely summarized uh, what we, uh, how we have started and uh, what the, uh, how we came up with Enrich project and how they developed it into becoming such a great international one. But the whole story started in 2012, right after the fifth International Conference of English as a Lingua Franca. At this point, I want to stop and say one thing. I am very proud to be from Boazici University. I know that there are Turkish audience here. This is not a political statement, but I want to say that because it has given me such a great opportunity to carry out this topic further and uh, to come up with such a great, such great theories, such great CPDs and so on. So in that sense, I want to emphasize this. Okay, now I want to continue. This is just before the closing of the COVID-19 project. This was uh, uh, the multiplier event of the project. This is the only time we had people together. So I wish we had this conference together face to face like this. But anyway, I hope that will come in the next Enrich conference, hopefully. Okay. so. As uh, uh, already mentioned uh, by Nikos, we know about the earlier definitions of ELF as a shared common language, intently multilingual, and so on. And the most recent one by dear uh, Jennifer Jenkins is a English as a multilingual Franca. And there are some overlaps between this concept and translanguaging and so on. I don't want to go into detail, but just to remind. And then as Nikos has already talked about, I'm not going to go over this, um, we have actually developed this concept, uh, con concept of alpha variants, then Nikos turned it into a theoretical uh, reference for many researchers. And I'm following this um, alpha awareness uh, um, frame that Nikos and, you know, throughout the project, and then he finally nicely put it down um, in my research. It's very helpful, okay? I'm not uh, kind of commercializing, but this is true. And then alpha awareness, uh, English language education, as Nikos has said, is very much related to how we have motivate English teachers, how we need them to become reflective practitioners to be able to go over uh, their own context and relate it. And now, um, in the Enrich project, from my point of view, what I've seen was we had given them some constructs like the ones we have given in the earlier ones, and they had a chance to think about them critically and then uh, locate, situate themselves within their contexts. And then uh, during the forums, during the CPD, CPD exercises and so on, um, practice them with other people. I'm going to give you some quotes from teachers to mean what I, to, to explain what I mean. So these are some of the topics we have in fact uh, included in earlier projects and we have uh, developed them in a much more systematic framework in this uh, enriched CPD. So uh, as also Nikos nicely uh, summarized, uh, this is the written form of it, earlier projects and what we have now. 
And this was in the from the beginning until now, we are still questioning and Nikos and Stefania is constantly publishing about this transformative framework. And thanks to Nikos, this was, this came into our lives. Uh, how it is related to alpha awareness is an important uh, factor from a theoretical point of view and how this can be further uh, integrated into uh, classroom practices is another perspective. It is coming up very nicely in this uh, project. Uh, if you have a look at the teachers, uh, reflections, teachers, lesson plans, and their uh, criticisms against each other's topics, you see this actually. Although mm -hmm. as in the earlier publications and later ones, we have admitted that it is a long-term process. You cannot really expect teachers to change their mindsets overnight, but in this project, I think we have uh, overcome this topic. I mean, even if you cannot really assess how much they transformed, you can see they have learned a lot. They have situated themselves a lot in this um, realm of elf. And we will see the product in the next step. I think we will need to see more of uh, classroom examples, teachers and students' perspectives and so on to see how this is reflected. Although we have evidence right now, which will be in the coming days nicely published. And uh, we have actually one special issue of uh, Boaz University Journal of Education coming out where Nikos' uh, principles are also published and put as a uh, section, uh, Martin as a section. All those people who participated in an ALF Day uh, project, ALF Day series uh, we are organizing at Boazici. So we will be announcing that. Please follow us. Okay. So these are some of the reflections. I'm, as I said, I'm not going to take long, but I'm, I just want to say that I'm so amazed on how teachers, in fact, um, took the message. There's one uh, you know, message from a Turkish teacher here as well. These are from Turkish teachers data. Uh, joining discussions from forum related use of ELF are really beneficial for me because they can understand and compare teaching and learning context in different countries. So being in such a group was very beneficial for them to understand what they were doing was not just um, for the Turkish teachers or just for this context, but it is done in different contexts and teachers share similar feelings. And then another one, teacher says, I learned a lot. I learned that I am not alone. This is also very important. I believe in community of practice is has an important effect on people's development. So this, in fact, we now developed at least a community of practice of alphabet teachers in this Enrich project. And then, um, thanks for, and <laughs> this is a Turkish saying. I hope, I'm sure you have similar ones. Uh, the third one, it very, and she says, thanks for the tickets provided to encourage us to start a journey. So ELF is a journey, ELF awareness is another one. So I think, this, uh, in fact, gave them the initiative, which is very important. And these are the last two. Uh, they also, in this one, she talks about the design of the course, which Nikos also mentioned, mentioned in the beginning, in the opening talk. The teacher finds it quite detailed and well-designed. So this is very important because it has refreshed uh, his or her memory. And uh, she also felt, again, she is belonging to a group uh, and it has become more meaningful to discuss those topics. And finally, uh, one of the teachers says, because we talk about minds all the time, my mind started to, to become clear about F and how to integrate it in my classrooms. This was one of the very last interviews we carried out with teachers, uh, they said. But she says, because of the COVID, she couldn't, she wasn't able to implement it in the classroom, okay? So this is a pity. But uh, as I said, they have developed and shared it. And just before I finish, this is the Turkish team, which we'll be talking about. And these are some of the photos from uh, our multiplier event and our teachers, dear teachers who participated. I just wanted to acknowledge them even in the beginning. Thank you very much. I think that's it. That's, I, I, um, I would like to face and address something that have, I have learned as a teacher and as a teacher educator through the Enrich project, by participating to it as a researcher, by um, working on the development of the materials, but 
all, mostly by working with teachers who didn't have any idea of what ELF was about and what it implied. So I started thinking that, well, I had to investigate more on what as teacher and as teacher educator I got from this experience, from this journey, as Yasemin's um, participant said, because it was a journey for us teacher educators as well, because we changed lots of things in the meanwhile. Right. Um, um, I think that the development and the implementation of the REACH project was the result of three main factors. There are many others, but I identified the, these three ones. One, that there was a shared understanding of the role of ELF. Now, we can see it from the conference program. If you look at the, the mm, mm, submission of the papers that were submitted, I think from all of them, comes out this idea that there is a shared understanding of health, a shared understanding of the role that health has. The second factor to me was the notion of awareness, and in particular, obviously, the notion of health awareness that came out as something that, for example, I hadn't come across until I met Nikos Sifakis, started working with him. So it was something new. And as all that happens new, it gives you a lot of information and a lot of stimuli. So I was, in a way, taken to a point that I had to revisit and rethink what I had been doing. And the third factor is the challenging emergence of multilingual landscapes. Why so? Because I think that in the audience, we are all familiar with this new perspective and this new phenomenon. But let's look at uh, the main, uh, the main, uh, the, the main points, the three factors. And I uh, wanted uh, to um, uh, add to the roundtable um, uh, title uh, the quote: "There is more than meets the eye," and I was so glad that Kurt, in his Kurt Kahn in his speech, mentioned that because in Elf there is much more than meets the eye that we learn to discover, and in a way, there is uh, when I talk about a shared understanding of the role of Elf, Elf I I would say has helped us all teachers trainer or teacher educators and students to see things in our teaching and training that we had never noticed before. And as a consequence, we ended up appropriating and using them to sustain our learners' development. What do I mean by that? Which things have we started uh, seeing through this role of health, through health? from the wealth of global exchanges to the potential of authenticity of our context, from the translingual and transcultural orientations and repertoires that have been emerging from migration to the suggestions of notions such as super diversity, translanguaging, code meshing, to the multilingual voices and identities that surround us at school, on the metro, in the streets, we don't live anymore in a monolingual environment. We are, our ear, ears and eyes are full of voices and new people that are stimulating us and are challenging us to take a different position, a different stance. So in a way, this is also due to the role of ELF. ELF has helped us all to see and notice things and choose what was most feasible and most appropriate for our job. I also mentioned the notion of awareness and I put it as the second um, uh, point, second factor, because it's holding it's been holding our Enriched Project. It's been holding our reflection about the Enriched Project. 
And I would like to say that at the beginning, I'm thinking of my reaction, for example, when we talk about awareness, my mind and most teachers' minds and teacher educators uh, go back to a notion that was started by in about more than two decades of, uh, ago, and it was the notion of language awareness, something that has been addressed by many scholars and that we have kept as part of our heritage, in a way, as teachers and teacher educators. It has guided us all for a long time, but most recently we've been associating awareness with elf. And we started, because of that, noticing aspects that we had previously overlooked. When we talked about language awareness, we were looking at what language does and how it does it. But now we have a, mm, a, a broader view of what we are noticing, thanks to the fact that we have been associating elf with awareness, elf awareness, the way um, Nikosifakis has previously explained. So, what has the elf lens? allowed us to see, to focus upon, and to exploit differently. That has, uh, in a way, led us to work differently in our classes, in our courses, and in the Enrich project. We started looking differently at the, um, the way communication takes place now. We started looking differently to the, at the role of non-native speakers. And we started uh, in a way enhancing what we had uh, some time ago sort of left aside, the notion of learner-centeredness, the whole pedagogical notion of learner-centeredness that partly came out in Professor Kurt's, uh, Kurt Kahn's speech. And we started having a diverse view of the value of our learners out of school experience. What they do outside the classroom that we never noticed before. What we often at school as for learners, but also in teacher education courses with our trainees, teachers, we ask all of them to leave the world outside the classroom. This is something that we have taken back thanks to Elf Awareness because with Elf helped us see what was happening beyond the classroom. And for example, looking at uh, the out of school experience and the language of, for example, social media, that is the language that is mostly um, used and exploited by our learners, something we tended not to overlook and not to explore with them. We have a lot to learn from our students, from what they do and they learned outside the classroom. So this was partly the result of Elf Awareness. And to conclude, what uh, have we found from the multilingual landscapes? Because that, that is a challenging emergence. Uh, teachers uh, have often told us that they feel very uneasy when they face multilingual class classes, where they often encounter learners that are bio-trilingual, and we as teachers are adding a third language. How to do that? This is a challenge that they seldom had the opportunity to study, to explore when they were preparing to become teachers. That goes to the teacher education issue that Professor Kohn mentioned. So they are suddenly faced by issues they have never been prepared before. So how to deal with, for example, the language of schooling, how to sustain learners learning of content and of foreign languages and the learning of English that they often know better than the traditional students we have in our classes. I'm talking of 
the migrants students, the migrant students who are um, uh, mm, compose most of our classes. So many of them already know English. So how to deal with this unbalancement? This is something teachers explore and experience for the first time. Not all teachers, but many teachers, particularly in European schools. So how to address, for example, the emerging multimedia literacies? Again, something we haven't been prepared for, but this is a challenge that comes from migration and from the multilingual landscapes and from our out of school experience of our learners. Learners who have become mutant learners. They are not the learners we used to uh, think of uh, when we started teaching. They are, to us, they have um, capabilities to, and tools that we, that they often surprise us because they can do things in a different way with language, the language we are um, asked to teach them. To conclude, what are our learners' multilingual identities bringing into the classroom? What are they taking to us that we hadn't noticed before, we hadn't thought of before? And this comes from what we've been doing in the Rich Project. Multilingual landscapes are surrounding us and can provide an enriching perspective. And we have to make the most out of it. And that we, when, even when we started planning and reach, we hadn't thought of all these implications because we hadn't paid attention to what surrounded us all in our own context. So to conclude, the enriched CPD course uh, gave a response to all of that, an aware response for teachers and teacher educators, I think. This is something that we should bear in mind, that it's not only the teachers <clears throat> who attend the course, but also us teacher educators. And this is what the representation of uh, the overlapping uh, circles of uh, uh, the enriched course, teaching English, using English and learning English, with the three factors that I believe helped us all to make this enrich as it is. And we learned a lot from that. Um, hi, everyone. First of all, thank you for being here. And thank you, Nikos, for uh, hosting here uh, such a wonderful conference. And thank you for inviting me and I think all our partners for being a part of this project, which has had such a huge impact. Um, and we hope that it will continue to have a huge impact, as we can see by the number of uh, participants that we have here today. So. Um, my colleagues have spoken uh, about uh, all these relevant issues and I don't wanna be uh, repetitive. Uh, so what I would just like to think about here is why now, why enrich? Um, why is it so important uh, in the stage that we're going through? And bearing in mind that uh, enrich began in 2018. And what we've been seeing is the fact that uh, many societies nowadays are becoming increasingly multilingual and multicultural. Um, especially considering the different migratory patterns that are taking place um, in different parts of the world. Here in Europe especially, we've been seeing this, um, not only immigrants, uh, but also the issue of refugees, right? And what we've seen is in many of our contexts is the fact that English is in fact usually the, ling the language of communication. What we know for a fact is that English is the most taught foreign language. And many of these, uh, our students come in fact with already some English. And uh, so they bring their own experience into the classrooms. And this is usually the common language for us to be able to communicate them at whatever level it may be. Um, and the fact is that what we've seen is a more diverse student population in our schools. Um, and what we, uh, Ten, what we fo wanted to focus on is this aspect of, and the reality is, of teachers needing to reconsider their teaching practices and approaches, bearing in mind this reality, um, because there were perhaps certain contexts that were not so used to receiving a large number of um, immigrants and migrants, and this is a new reality that teachers have to deal with, so therefore the relevance of this project now. 
Um, taking a look at the EFL context, for instance, one of the questions that I put here are, are teachers aware of the social cultural aspects of the use of English in multicultural and multilingual contexts? And as my colleagues already referred to, the importance of elf awareness here of this uh, concept of uh, teachers being able to reflect upon and being able to see uh, to what point it may be implemented in their uh, own contexts. Um, let me just taking, oops, sorry. The importance of enrich. Um, the fact is that when we take a look at many teachers may not have this experience of dealing with the multilingual and multicultural classrooms. They may uh, not have been prepared. They may not have received uh, adequate training to deal with the uh, diverse classrooms. And this may do, be due for a number of reasons. For instance, the historical or social con cultural context where they come from, their former pre-service or in-service training, uh, bearing in mind that teachers with, let's say, 20, 30 years of experience, the uh, pre-service teacher training that they received is a bit different from what it is nowadays. Our reality has changed. In-service training, for instance, uh, is a reality, but what topics are developed on? Perhaps self-awareness is not a topic that is much uh, developed on in terms of in-service training in certain contexts. And then there's also the school context to take into consideration, uh, because depending on what where teachers are placed, this may be not may not be a reality that uh, they are familiar with the concept of elf awareness. What is it, right? How may it be implemented? Uh, to what extent um, is it relevant? So these are all aspects to keep in mind, and. Um, I just wanted to focus here on the Portuguese context specifically of why is it important, the Enrich project, and what way did it contribute uh, to our um, own context? Well, the fact is that Portugal is a small country. So it's uh, in the past, it was uh, a country of immigration. So many people left. But in recent years, what we've seen is the number of immigrants has actually increased. And it's not only from countries that we were used to receiving, let's say from former uh, countries uh, that were former colonies, let's say from Angola, uh, Brazil, um, and so on, but we're receiving countries, uh, immigrants from countries that we are quite unfamiliar with, with the different cultural and linguistic backgrounds, such as Nepal, Pakistan, Venezuela. So these are new realities that teachers are having to deal with. And this is reflected in the actual um, public schools that uh, what we've seen state schools, if you want, uh, this is a new reality. And we did, uh, Lucila will be talking about the needs analysis later on here in the conference, but just taking a look at the Portuguese context and seeing why Enrich is so relevant. It's the fact that we were able to see that there's a very large percentage of teachers who are over the age of 50 and they received their initial training at a different time. So this was about 30 years ago. So the reality of the Portuguese classroom was very different. So therefore the relevance of focusing on these aspects. And it was curious to see that um, we received many responses uh, for this uh, questionnaire that we developed from these teachers that um, are over the, the age of 50. They were interested in this topic. So it's good to see that this is a relevant topic. Um, and also one of the aspects that we saw was that more than half of the teachers believe that they haven't received adequate training to integrate their migrant students in their English classes. So again, the relevance of Enrich uh, for teachers. And just to see here an impact that Enrich has, because um, we, we sent out uh, right, uh, the call for the CPD course that we're also going to be um, discussing. There were over 200 EFL teachers that were interested in enrolling in our um, CPD course. So we, again, we can see the relevance of it. Um, unfortunately, we were only able to accept 30 due to the constraints of managing the course. And unfortunately, the fact is that we know that uh, COVID kicked in and this changed our reality. Um, we were able to see that many of our enrolled participants wanted to conclude the course. We did have 23 who did end, uh, finish the course, and which means almost 80%, which is pretty good. And those that were unable to finish were mentioned that it was because of the stress of COVID, of online teaching. So um, it is an issue that we've seen. Fortunately, though, because uh, this is an Erasmus Plus project and what we want is to disseminate and make knowledge accessible to all, 
this will be available for everyone later on, right? So um, it is good to see that the impact to that of what we're doing uh, was visible not only in the Portuguese context, but in all our contexts uh, of what we were doing. So I'll, we'll be discussing these aspects uh, throughout the course of the conference. And I just wanted to discuss here a little bit of the impact and the importance of Enrich at this time. So that's it from my part. I, especially in exciting conferences like this one, that are the products of um, uh, excite, equally exciting projects and Enrich is an exciting project, refreshing in so many different ways and definitely uh, with a great deal of impact. So thank you organizers for bringing our voices together and giving us the space and the time uh, to share uh, the experience and of course, the very many lessons that we learned. As I said, this is an ROB, so I tried to get rid of um, the uh, overlap and thank you to all previous speakers who set the scene and the tone for this. I just like to uh, do justice to all the people behind my screen because there are so many wonderful people that uh, we've been collaborating on this project. And the names are Muna, Linel, Therese, Kirsten, and Dragana. Thank you very much for sharing and uh, uh, working on this uh, exciting uh, uh, project, as I said. And thank you for all the time. And of course, it was a lot more time than everybody um, expected, but definitely well spent. Without you, uh, this wouldn't have come uh, to a successful end. And I'd like to thank you all for being participants and co-travelers in this long journey that Yasmin uh, stressed earlier that definitely uh, helped us all to get to know each other and support the teachers, the Norwegian teachers that worked with us uh, on the CBT course and other activities of the project. So as I said, I'm just gonna uh, focus on the lessons that we learned and um, perhaps uh, the rest of the partners and the rest of the participants uh, recognize uh, a little bit of what I'm about to talk in the next two minutes. So the lessons learned, absolutely engaging and enriched has been a learning process for all participants. Uh, surely with positive impact, not just on the partners and the partner members, but also the teachers, and all those who acted as mentors and, of course, the learners, because we did engage learners in the project. And there will be quite a lot of discussions over that in, in the next two days. But what are the lessons that we learned? We learned that working within elf environments requires a lot of transformations on so many different levels, transforming ourselves from becoming and being the native to actually going over and moving forward, not being the native and feeling comfortable in what we can do with the linguistic resources that we have, that we owe. Definitely the multiple roles, the multiple roles for teachers, the mentors and the students. But what we really learned a lot from the engagement and the interaction throughout these three years is that we reflected a lot on the way we teach, on the way we train, we problematize the constructs we teach and we train by. And that was definitely a transformative process for all of us. We reflected and we problematized on the accommodations and resources that we actually offered to our participants through the courses and materials that we offered in the CBT course. Henceforth, we decided to pilot the materials with our teachers to work with them, to support them, and to mentor them throughout. But what we learned above everything were the synergies and interfaces that came out of this exciting interaction. So for example, and speaking a little bit for myself, the synergy and the interface between ELF and assessment was not only reflected and is not only reflected in the CBT course, but we learned how very challenging the field is, how much more work we need to do in that area, how many opposing uh, ideas and opinions uh, we have come across, uh, where uh, a lot of times ourselves and our teachers felt that maybe perhaps we're not doing justice if we move further from assessing the stereotypical uh, native proficiency levels of uh, our students. Other topics that uh, we problematized and we uh, have already started doing research in is 
teacher ideologies towards language learning in globalized world. And by ideologies, I'm sure that you are already <laughs> seeing yourselves in that. What is it and how do teachers think and feel around um, English as a lingua franca and, uh, of course, the very many different dimensions? And there's been quite a lot of discussion about elf awareness, but I would like to suggest maybe perhaps the way we need to look at it is in raising levels of elf literacy. And by elf literacy, I mean definitely elf awareness, but also being able to acquire the knowledge, the abilities and skills of feeling comfortable in the classroom when being in elf uh, environments which means living with uncertainty and transforming yourself as a teacher and a teacher trainer. And you can't really uh, cope with that without the collaborations and communities of practice that need to be created within environments at the level of schools or maybe universities, because it's not just for schools but all and teachers, but it's for us, the trainers, the mentors, and those of us who support teachers as well communities of practice, and this is what we learned from our engagement in the REACH project, are very, very important. And we've seen that happening at so many different levels within the, the CBT course and other aspects of the ENRICH uh, project. But I'm happy to discuss more details later. So enjoy the discussions and enjoy uh, the rest of the conference. Thank you. Uh, let me thank uh, everybody for... Uh... Uh, being a member of this partnership and a uh, member of this uh, conference. Uh, let me bring in, in the discussion, the aspect of the technology, the learning environment. So, elf awareness and... Let me... I seem to have a problem. Okay, let me just try it once more. Okay, uh, elf awareness and e-learning. How do we um, uh, combine this in the best way possible? When starting to develop an online environment, uh, you can understand that there is a great discussion going on and forth between the development team and the uh, team that uh, authors the course, that develops the course. Uh, in our case, in the Enrich uh, CBT course uh, development, the main questions uh, were threefold. Uh, the first was how to combine ELF, uh, uh, EF, ELF awareness and the active engagement of the participants of the in, in the in-course with the course content, and how to encourage constructive collaboration between the course participants, how to bring effective communication between participants, course participants and mentors, but also aspects uh, uh, regarding the look and feel of the learning environment. Uh, we uh, wanted it to be easy to access, uh, have uh, the possibility, provide the possibility for non-linear navigation and uh, make people feel comfortable in it. And finally, how to develop and organize the online material in terms of structure uh, so that it looks uh, homogeneous in a way. It looks um, uh, easy to follow. So, this is what we did. Um, we brought in videos to facilitate student engagement. So new information would come in from uh, this medium. And we gave emphasis to forums and peer review activities to facilitate constructive collaboration between e-course participants. And we uh, took action to support the role of the mentors into the course. Regarding the role of the mentors in the NRH course, uh, we should just mention that there were two kinds of, two types of mentors. Type A, which had to do with uh, Moodle uh, mentors, and a uh, second type that had to do with uh, local mentors. All mentors in the Enrich program uh, uh, shared same responsibilities. They had to uh, follow the study schedule to make sure that participants followed the study schedule and that they were engaged with uh, all mat the material, that they followed the activities at least in the compulsory ones, and that the uh, people participating in the course felt confident that this is something that's good for their uh, professional development. 
Um, so uh, in our case, we looked at the Moodle mentors uh, who were uh, responsible uh, to trigger discussions and to give constructive uh, feedback, offer further resources if needed. So what we did to facilitate their work was to offer dedicated forums uh, to each particular activity that uh, uh, needed uh, discussion and that we had a specific forum dedicated to general discussion so that people could express their anxiety, their problems or further uh, questions irrelevant to their uh, activities. And uh, there was also a tight study schedule indicating the active period of its uh, uh, mentor and when they would be available and where, so that uh, participants, course participants, would know uh, when and how to communicate with uh, their mentors. Uh, now the look and feel. So as you can see, uh, for those who have not uh, participated in the Moodle course, we tried it to make it look nice. Uh, feel easy to follow. Uh, you can see on the left of the screen that the uh, participants could navigate in a linear way, but in the center of the screen, you can see a picture. It is an active picture. We will say more about this in our next uh, uh, presentation, uh, where uh, just uh, participants could select one path, any path, and follow their own course according to their previous uh, needs, uh, experiences, and knowledge. And uh, finally, uh, the inside, the material, the organization of the material, this is one instance of one, uh, uh, one session, and this is an instance of another session. You see that they, uh, they share the same templates. They are, were organized to have the same um, uh, structure so that uh, it is that students feel uh, confident and uh, know what to do in every section. This is pretty much it for now, and uh, we'll be happy to show more and discuss more in a later presentation. Thank you very much. So, thank you everybody, uh, to all the participants in the panel. And without uh, any further ado, I'd like to give the floor to our discussant, uh, Professor Barbara Zeidlehofer uh, from uh, Vienna, in the University of Vienna, uh, Austria. Barbara. Hello. Hello. Hello, Nikos and You're everybody. I hope, hello. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Does it work? Yes. Oh, uh, very great. well. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much um, for um, the invitation to be discussed here and generally to um, participate in this conference, but generally also in the evolution of the Enrich project. And as you can imagine, my head is already buzzing. We've heard, uh, you know, your introduction, Kurt's plenary, and then all your contributions and there's so much already to talk about so i've got a very messy um notes in front of me and set myself the task to not talk longer than the average um, presentation we've had um so um what i will try to do is just uh, try and pull together a few things with a view to of course developing all this in the way that it will go this afternoon where we'll be looking again at um elf um uh in, um, in rich uh, practices and principles uh the ones indeed that uh, Nikos um, presented uh, at the beginning of, of this um, round table now, uh, the premises and principles um, that we are becoming aware of and, and familiar with. And for instance, these two principles that really, I suppose one could also say adaptability to local, local context would be something that really looms large here, right? But of course, much more is uh, can be said. And then Yasemin uh, talked like many or most of you also about elf awareness in multilingual contexts, uh, the integration uh, in language teaching practice with examples uh, and linking back to what was it and, and, and Turkey um, uh, in, in the input uh, of all this, right? Uh, with nice pics, uh, pic pictures also. And Lucilla then um, already brought some things together by again talking about elf awareness in ELT um, and the vision of the K principles. Actually, I may have missed what um, whether Lutilla said what the K uh, was that she uh, referred to, um, but I mean it's key, but it's uh, Kurt Korn, uh, so that uh, works very very well, right? The shared understanding um, in of the role of elf, um, notion of awareness, uh, and the challenging emergence of the multilingual uh, landscapes, right? Um, uh, so. Um, 
what I would like to hold on to here is this uh, notice, noticing through the ELF lens, because I think that's what we will keep coming back to this, what Kurt referred to as this switch. I mean, that is the absolute crucially, absolutely crucial thing uh, that um, how Kurt was saying uh, is actually a switch that sounds difficult, but isn't because it is actually the switch to what is normal as he put it, yeah, what we already know. And um, that goes and in, encompasses then all the um, uh, wishes uh, for learner-centeredness uh, that, of course, always loom large, right? And as, as uh, Lucilla uh, said, what surrounded us all in our own context all along, but sometimes uh, we didn't see, didn't see for looking <laughs> as it were, right? And then Lily also talked about of elf awareness in ELT, uh, but uh, with this focus on multilingual settings, um, particularly uh, also in the Portuguese context, um, migration, refugees as well, and uh, students' own experience of English that they bring already, right? And Dina then uh, complemented this with the Norwegian context, so a very nice, um, I think, example of, of differences and similarities, um, the lessons learned, synergies and interfaces and collaborations across institutions and levels, um, communities of practice. And then uh, Maria concluded with the intricacies and potential of fostering elf awareness via e-learning and e-collaboration. Right. So far, I think we can see that although these things look different, actually, um, some things are already coming together. And I think I have a strong feeling that in this conference, uh, there will be a lot of coming together, which after all, although it's not physically um, possible, is exactly what should happen in a conference. Right. Uh, so these strong uh, common themes running through all contributions, the development of a shared understanding um, of communication in today's real world, as it was put, and how this relates to uh, language pedagogy and teacher education, right? Um, what seems particularly important to me then is that, of course, our experience, you know, we live in our bodies um, and our experience is primarily in a local context. It cannot be otherwise. Uh, this is where our understanding evolves. But then, of course, and this is why we have projects and conferences like this, uh, the next necessary step is this generalizing, which after all is theorizing, yeah, uh, this sharing ideas uh, for building on, on common uh, practices for transferability uh, to other contexts and for sustainability of these ideas and for further evolution. So it's absolutely crucial that we keep uh, checking back uh, on this shared understanding and its development uh, as a precondition uh, for uh, changing. Um, so we're talking evolution, not revolution, which again, I think is, I, I perceive that as a very strong um, enriched goal, uh, because after all, we are connected with real people in real contexts with constitutional constraints uh, of all sorts. Um, there was a brief discussion uh, in the discussion period um, after Kurt's plenary today, where again, this was acknowledged that this is the difficulty, right? Um, so, um, okay, so I think all this actually does then lead lead us up to uh, Kurt Korn's plenary, which for me was the perfect um, explanation and illustration of all that, right? So I was thinking, actually listening up, up to now, that it would be a great to revisit everything that Kurt said at the end of the conference, right, as a kind of uh, test um, uh, of uh, where we are with Enrich uh, in having performed this uh, switch that um, Kurt um, described so eloquently uh, to, you know, who am I, who do I want to be, uh, and the importance of already being able to communicate fully in at least one other language and actually simply um, making use of all that, not losing it when we switch into, into another foreign language, right? So that really is um, exactly what we are talking about. And this switch again was very apparent. I mean, Lucilla referred to it a lot, right? Uh, so see the things uh, that you never saw before. Uh, but of course they are there all the time and that's the importance um, to, to see them and to not lose sight of them. 
in fact, it was really funny. I was reminded when I was, um, you know, um, kind of looking for context, etc., of um, a talk that Martin Dewey, whom we will also be hearing, and I were giving at the ELF 12 uh, conference in Colombia, right, uh, where we also talked about um, uh, teacher education. And I don't think I will hold us up by sharing a screen, but I have an extract here uh, from my own handout there, which again seems to uh, key in perfectly with what uh, has been said so far and I'm just reading from this um, handout uh, um, it was headed my personal desideratum for the immediate and medium term future and this was a session on on elf and teacher education and there were really two points integrating and lively dialogue integration and lively dialogue between conceptual and empirical work and pedagogic development especially teacher education. We must support novice and experienced teachers in not, uh, not just adjusting practices, but in revisiting, examining, interrogating theoretical frameworks of language, so sociolinguistics of learning, of social psychology, of communication. And this communication was in, in bold uh, print. And then secondly, from this will result a bottom-up evolution yeah, not revolution, in respect to the tricky, thorny issues and hubs of resistance to elf-informed thinking, language education, planning and policy. One might uh, mention the common European framework of reference, curriculum and materials design, testing and assessment. So I think this really keys in absolutely with, with what's, what's been uh, said uh, so far. Um, so in, in principle, it seems very clear uh, that what is needed for moving on um, in, in practice, of course, uh, and again, um, this has become apparent, uh, there are difficulties, right? This native speakerism that was already mentioned, which really, as Kurt said, is there, of course, always, right? But the fact that the, the question is what you do about it. And again, for this action, you need this, this shared understanding. And it's not just a knee-jerk reaction to any particular or any particulars of a particular situation. Uh, so um, uh, of course, these are tricky issues. And I mean, testing, uh, which um, uh, Dina and others will talk about more in the conference, is of course kind of the ultimate barrier, right, um, and that we are up against. But um, unless we have developed a shared understanding, um, the, um, um, we won't make progress. So it's an absolute precondition and that's why it's so important to have this conference and the project and others uh, to talk about this. So this, this switch is absolutely key and the rest will follow. Yeah? Uh, we can't individually tackle all aspects everywhere. Um, but if, with this shared understanding, a kind of critical mass, um, um, also in different practical things, uh, this will add up uh, to an eventual um, uh, adjustment, uh, change, understanding and evolution. Um, so if uh, we do perform the switch that uh, Kurt uh, Kohn uh, described so eloquently, um, and um, of course that, as he said, we, we have been talking about uh, for a while, but if this switch is really performed that, as he said, it is not actually difficult once you realize this is the fundamental thing to do, uh, then things will not uh, fall apart, but they will actually fall into place. So I think that's all I want to say for now. Thank you very much for a very stimulating um, session here. And I very much look forward to further discussion and all the uh, contributions that we are uh, going to hear. Thank you.